every single moment of our lives, we are being bombarded. Bombarded with what are called waves. There are all sorts whizzing around, but for most of us, when we think of waves, we think of these. Moving waves of water. But there are other types of moving waves, such as electromagnetic waves, which carry energy. Some we can see, but many simply whiz past us, invisible. But we do use them. We use them to talk to each other. We can use them to spy on us in the dark, to even look deep inside us. And the ones we can see, light waves, to entertain us. These waves make up a huge range, a spectrum called the electromagnetic spectrum. The only part of the spectrum we can see is called light. But how does this sun light reach Earth? Well, light is made of waves. These waves travel incredibly fast, taking only eight minutes to travel the 135 million kilometers from the sun. They travel in straight lines, and we sense them here by entering our eyes. The sun only provides light during the day, but these days we've plenty of light at night. Hi. Hi. There's going to be a really big gig on here tonight. Loads of lights and stuff in here. I come to the right place? You have. Yeah, in you go. Thank you. I was looking for the place where a huge rave was being organised for that night. Already there seemed to be some strange goings on. Inside, there were hundreds of lights all being wired up. I wanted to find one of the lighting crew to fill me in on exactly what sort of lights they were going to be using. One thing I could tell already, it was definitely going to be colourful. Uh, I'm just testing the lamp at the moment that was playing up. Um, it's basically just a lamp with uh, lots of different, or seven in this case, different coloured filters that we can rotate. Which, which is just eight. Seven colours blue, uh, yellow, orange. Uh, red, yellow, and mauve. Oh, wow, dark. That's, that's wonderful. Yeah. It's, it's very dark blue. A normal blue, pink. What we have in there is a wheel, so you can actually rotate the colours and then we can basically make it go very fast. And you can mix the rainbow effect, they call it, to sort of uh, almost go into open white. Because that's Because mixing basically it's mixing the colours so fast, it's actually deceiving the eye or the brain into thinking that you're sort of seeing white. The colours flashing on my hand looked amazing, but Ian wanted to show me how he could mix different coloured lights together to make even more colours. Use one of these heavies, please. With this, I can bring up the colours in red. red, and we can add green to that red, we can mix it in, we'll get a yellow. We can take green out, and add blue, which will produce magenta. I was amazed at just how two lights could combine to make such a range of colours. I was wondering what three lights would do. All down, we can bring all three up together, we'll produce white light. It's reflected back. So this red sample bounced back a lot of light at the red wavelengths. That's okay for tiny samples, but David has to measure the huge paintings. <laughs> To do that, he needs to book them in for an appointment in his laboratory. Once they reach there, all he has to do is clamp them into place, ready for his extraordinary colour scanning machine.
the machine records the colours very accurately by shining different coloured lights at the painting and measures exactly what light bounces back. Then this information is all fed into his computer. We want to know exactly what colour the paintings are now so that when we look at them again in the future, we can see if they've changed at all. It would be possible to take the measurements and to actually work out for each tiny area of the painting the wavelengths of light that it reflected back. And there's a lot more to colour than meets the eye. Our eyes can see all these colours. But are there any outside this range we can't see? In fact, there are. Beyond the colour violet, there's a whole world just as colourful. Although our eyes can't see it, there are other eyes that can. If you were a bee, you'd see a different range of colours. Bees can see ultraviolet light waves. Ultraviolet light also comes from the sun, but we can't see it. While this flower looks yellow to us, the ultraviolet light could make it look like this to the bee. So bees can see beyond what we can see at this end of the spectrum of colours. But what about the opposite end? Could there be anything beyond red? strange dark house. I think I'm all alone. Who knows? In here I could hardly see a thing because my eyes couldn't pick up any visible light. The only way to see me clearly here is to use infrared waves a part of the spectrum beyond red. In fact, security cameras can see me clearly. They're using infrared, a part of the spectrum my eyes can't see, but there's a camera sensitive to infrared that can see me. Cameras that can detect infrared waves are more and more common these days, but there's another part of the spectrum, again invisible to us, that's so frequently used, it's easy to forget it's part of the same family of waves. Hello, Helen. Hi, Joe. If you pop up on here, I'll show you how we take an X-ray. OK. X-rays. They're used every day in hospitals, and what makes X-rays so special is that they have a very short wavelength and can actually go right through your body, as Joe Gledhill explains. Move you down like this, so the right bit of you was underneath the X-ray tube. The X-rays would come from up here, go through you, through the table, and down onto this X-ray plate under here, which is, has a special film that's sensitive to X-rays. OK. Thank you. As X-rays can go right through parts of the body, with X-ray sensitive film, we can actually take pictures of what's going on inside. Well, because X-rays are capable of going straight through the body, they're very useful for detecting what happens to the hard structures inside. I think everybody's familiar with the use for uh, looking at broken bones. 
Well, to produce a traditional X-ray like this, it's really very simple. As the X-rays shine through the body, they're stopped by the hard parts of the body. We get a white area. The soft parts of the body don't stop the X-rays, and they go straight through. So where the X-rays land on the plate, we get a blackened area. Where the X-rays don't come through, it comes out white. But I was wondering about the dangers of X-rays. Well, Helen, because X-rays are basically light rays of very high energy, if those X-rays are stopped by the hard parts of the body, as I've described, that energy is deposited within the body, and that can be dangerous. So we're always very conscious to minimise the amount of X-rays that we deliver into a patient, now to a very small and very safe level. And that's why Joe, who works with X-rays every day, stands behind a protective screen. But there's a far less dangerous part of the electromagnetic spectrum we use every day. Radio waves. Aerials pick up radio waves. We can't see or hear them, but they are there, being sent out, transmitted, from radio transmitters all the time. This one is sending them out now in all directions. And just like all electromagnetic waves, they travel in straight lines and carry energy. This miniature radio transmitter is pumping out radio waves now. Engineer David Yates wanted to prove to me they carried energy. Here I am with a bulb lighting in space, no batteries up my sleeve, no wires joining me to anything, and yet the bulb's lit. It does look a bit like magic. It isn't magic at all. The electromagnetic wave is in space. They're quite strong because I'm close to a transmitting aerial, but nevertheless, I'm extracting energy from it and lighting the bulb. It's as simple as that. You couldn't do this at home as it only works with a transmitter like this. but huge radio transmitters can be seen all over the country. This is to make sure we can all tune in and pick up the radio waves. But to be able to pick them up, you have to have an aerial, and of course equipment to receive and convert the radio waves into something we can hear. These days, radio receivers can pick up a huge range of radio wavelengths simply at the press of a button. And their wavelengths can vary, from a few millimetres to over a hundred kilometres. Part of David's job is to make sure we all get good, strong radio signals. But he wanted to point out that it's not only radio signals that are carried on radio waves, but also television signals. People get confused about the fact that uh, television sets pick up radio waves. I mean, that's the way the words are used. And in this case, they're picked up by this aerial, which is pointing in the direction of the transmitter. Let's see what you, what's on your set today, then, Helen. David wanted to see if I was receiving a good television signal, so I switched on and got a real surprise. Believe it or not, it was one of the series, and there I was. It was weird. You know, it seems really funny seeing yourself on TV. So well, what, you, what we're picking up now is quite a good, strong signal because the aerial on top of the set is pointing along the line of the signal direct to the transmitter. If you turn the aerials in the wrong direction, you get this, which we call snow. Not very nice, is it? Now, if I turn the aerial back again, you'll see that the signal improves, which it gets better. I turn it slowly, and lo and behold, back in the direction of the transmitter. Very nice uh, picture now. That had put me in the picture concerning radio waves. But there are even more waves we use around the home. We all know what this is. A microwave oven. Microwaves are part of the spectrum, but in this case we're using their energy to heat and cook food for us. A 
And this chart shows how we use just one area of the spectrum at the radio end to carry information for us, whether over long or short distances. We've seen many uses of the waves in the electromagnetic spectrum, and now it was time to get back to the rave, as I knew they were going to use many parts of the spectrum that night. There were plenty of lights and light waves, of course, but I'd heard the security people were relying on radio waves. Hi, I'm Helen. Hi. Uh, can you tell me the kind of things you're using for security tonight? Please? Well, we use um, walkie-talkies. We've got to communicate with people on the front gate. It'd be impossible to do my job without radios and radio wave limbs, but I must get on with it. <laughs> OK, thanks. Hello, okay. right. Kevin. Everything's OK in the fun fair area, Claire. So that was radio waves. But I'd spotted another source of light, lasers. It was quite a climb to meet the guy organising the display. I made it. <laughs> Can you tell me a bit about lasers? What makes them so special? Right. Um, the, the reason that lasers are so special is they produce a very, very uh, tight beam of light in a narrow wavelength. Well, tonight we're actually doing a laser display which is uh, producing all these nice patterns so that uh, they'll show up in the smoke. So it looks almost like that it's a solid shape, a solid mass of light actually floating in the air. I was really looking forward to seeing all the laser and light displays. It wasn't long before people had started to arrive. But security had one more thing up their sleeve. All the tickets for the rave had been printed with special ink, which glows under ultraviolet light. If it didn't, they could tell it was a fake. <laughs> Hundreds of people had turned up. The lights all seemed to be working. And all I needed to do now was simply join in. So next time you're out and about, think about all the thousands and thousands of electromagnetic waves whizzing past us all the time. In some ways, we're lucky we can't see them all. 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 At this point, we'd like to apologise to viewers in London and the South East for the interruption to this programme, which was due to problems at Crystal Palace transmitter.